Menpetaya Ramesses, I or Ramses, was the founding pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 19th dynasty. The dates for his short reign are not completely known, but the timeline of late 1292 to 1290 BC is frequently cited as well as 1295 to 1294 BC. While Ramesses I was the founder of the 19th dynasty, his brief reign mainly serves to mark the transition between the reign of Hormib, who had stabilized Egypt in the late 18th dynasty, and the rule of the powerful pharaohs of his own dynasty, in particular his son Seti I, and grandson Ramesses Ei, Pharaoh, reign, 1-9-2-1-2-9-0 BC, or 1295-1294 BC. Predecessor, Hormib, successor, Seti I consort, Siter, children, Seti I, father, Seti, died. 1290 or 1294 BC. Burial. Kavi 16. Dynast. 19th dynasty originally called Parami Su. Ramesses I was of non royal birth, being born into a noble military family from the Nile Delta region, perhaps near the former Hyksos capital of Averis. He was a son of a troop commander called Seti. His uncle Kemwasit, an army officer, married Tamwa Jesse the matron of Tutankhamun's harem of Amun, who was a relative of Wee, the viceroy of Kush, an important state post. This shows the high status of Ramesses' family. Ramesses I found favor with Hormib, the last pharaoh of the tumultuous 18th dynasty, who appointed the former as his vizier. Ramesses also served as the high priest of Set VI as such. He would have played an important role in the restoration of the old religion, following the Amarna heresy of a generation earlier, under Akhenaten. Hormib himself had been a nobleman from outside the immediate royal family, who rose through the ranks of the Egyptian army to serve as the royal advisor to Tutankhamun and A, and ultimately, Pharaoh. Since Hormib had no surviving children, he ultimately chose Ramesses to be his heir in the final years of his reign, Presumably because Ramesses I was both an able administrator and had a son Seti I and a grandson, the future Ramesses II to succeed him, and thus avoid any succession difficulties. Upon his accession, Ramesses assumed a pronomen, or royal name. When transliterated, the name is Montai R, which is usually interpreted as Menpatire, meaning established by the strength of Ra. However, he is better known by his nomen, or personal name. This is transliterated as Armis Subaliu, and is usually realized as Ramesu or Ramesses, meaning Ra bore him. Already an old man when he was crowned, Ramesses appointed his son, the later pharaoh Seti I, to serve as the crown prince and chosen successor. Seti was charged with undertaking several military operations during this time, in particular, an attempt to recoup some of Egypt's lost possessions in Syria. Ramesses appears to have taken charge of domestic matters. Most memorably, he completed the second pylon at Karnak Temple. Begun under Hormib, Ramesses, I enjoyed a brief reign as evidenced by the general paucity of contemporary monuments mentioning him. The king had little time to build any major buildings in his reign, and was hurriedly buried in a small and hastily finished tomb. According to the Jewish historian Josephus, in his book Contrapionum which translated Menetho's Egyptiac, Menetho assigns this king a reign of 16 months. But this pharaoh certainly ruled Egypt for a minimum of 17 months based on his highest known date, which is a year 2-2 parrot day, 20 Louvre C57. Stila, which ordered the provision of new endowments of food and priests for the Temple of Ta within the Egyptian fortress of Bulan. In contrast, Ramesses I's son and successor, Seti I, assumed the throne five months later after the erection of the Stila on 3 Shimu day 24, which means that Ramesses I had a minimum reign of 17 months, or one year and five months. However, Based on a papyrus document published by Robert J. Damari in a 2023 publication, Damari argues that Ramesses I's predecessor, Hormid, died on 3 Shimu 22, based on evidence in Papyrus Turin Cat, 1898, plus Cat, 1937, plus Cat, 2094 244. 
which is a journal diary if confirmed. This would mean that Ramesses I actually had a reign of approximately two full years, since he would have ascended to the throne around 3 Shimu 23 soon after Hormeb's death on 3 Shimu 22, and died about two years later around the very same day since Ramesses I's son, Seti I, succeeded his father on 3 Shimu 24. Ramesses I's only known action was to order the provision of endowments for the aforementioned Nubian temple at Bulan, and at the construction of a chapel and a temple which was to be finished by his son at Abydos. The aged Ramesses was buried in the Valley of the Kings. His tomb, discovered by Giovanni Belzoni in 1817, and designated Covey 16, is small in size, and gives the impression of having been completed with haste. Joyce Tildesley states that Ramesses' eyes tomb consisted of a single corridor and one unfinished room, whose walls, after a hurried coat of plaster, were painted to show the king with his gods, with Osiris allowed a prominent position. The red granite sarcophagus too, was painted rather than carved with inscriptions, which, due to their hasty preparation, included a number of unfortunate errors. Seti I, his son and successor, later built a small chapel with fine reliefs in memory of his deceased father Ramesses I at Abydos. In 1911, John Pierpont Morgan donated several exquisite reliefs from this chapel to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. A mummy currently believed to be that of Ramesses I was stolen from Egypt and displayed in a private Canadian museum for many years before being repatriated. The mummy's identity cannot be conclusively determined, but is most likely to be that of Ramesses I, based on CT scans, X-rays, skull measurements, and radiocarbon dating tests by researchers at Emory University, as well as aesthetic interpretations of family resemblance. Moreover, the mummy's arms were found crossed high across his chest, which was a position reserved solely for Egyptian royalty until 600 BC. The mummy had been stolen from the royal cache in Deir el-Bahari by the Abu Rasul family of grave robbers and sold by Turkish vice consular agent Mustafa Aga at Luxor to Dr. James Douglas, who brought it to North America around 1860. Douglas used to purchase Egyptian antiquities for his friend, Sidney Barnett, who then placed it in the, the Niagara Falls Museum. At the time, the its identity of the mummified man was unknown. The mummy remained in the museum through moves to Niagara Falls, New York, and Niagara Falls, Ontario, next to other curiosities. For more than 130 years, the mummy was displayed as a, a prince of Egypt, but despite occasional speculation from visitors that he might be exactly that, nothing further was done. When the owner of the museum decided to sell his property, Canadian businessman William Jameson purchased the contents of the museum and, with the help of Canadian Egyptologist Gail Gibson, identified their great value. In 1999, Jameson sold the Egyptian artifacts in the collection, including the various mummies, to the Michael C. Carlos Museum at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia for $2 million. The mummy was returned to Egypt on October 24, 2003, with full official honors, and is on display at the Luxor Museum.